Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, my name's Colin Fry, and welcome to The Sixth Sense. Thank you very much for being with me today, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to invite you now to join me as we try to draw the two worlds just a little bit closer together. Okay. Oh, blimey, what a way to start me off. Okay. <coughs> um, I've just got the words Hong Kong banking put in my mind. <laughs> Have we got someone here that has got some connection to Hong Kong? I lived in Hong Kong. You lived in Hong Kong? Sweetie, when you were out there, were you out there with a gentleman that has now passed to the spirit? Mm -hmm. Oh, then we are correct. Okay. <clears throat> Did he deal with the financial matters when you were out there? Mm -hmm. Yeah? And when you came back home, I'm not going to say that you were like broke, because I don't think you were, but, but money was a bit tight. In fact, it was very tight. <laughs> yeah, do you understand? Yeah. yeah. Well, he's got a confession to actually make to you. I know he has. All right. <laughs> um, show me a figure. <clears throat> there was about £25,000 in a Hong Kong bank and he couldn't get it out of the country. It was like money that was like owed to him or due to him and he never had the heart to tell you that he couldn't get the money back home. And he said, I've lived it all this time and he said, and I can't have it on my conscience anymore, I've got to tell you. <laughs> he was um, very honest. <laughs> um, I'm afraid um, I lost 25,000 quid and, and we could have really me. done with that when we first we came could. back. <laughs> <laughs> you know, from, from Hong Kong, and he said, but I never had the heart to tell you. Because he knew, he knew that you would be less than happy with Kill him. Kill him. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe it's best to wait then until you have passed over before you pass these things on. All right. This guy just strikes me as being, you know, like a really lovable guy. He, he is a really nice guy. And he said, but I'm afraid mere money... Um, never seemed to go too well together. Mm. All right. <clears throat> Do you remember the gold watch? He didn't sell it, did he? <laughs> <laughs> um, and they said, you know, I've just got to tell you these things, you know, now. He said, because um, I, I, I really did need to get the money, you know. <laughs> so I'm afraid I did go out and I pawned it. Oh, don't. All right. <laughs> um, what I've got to actually say to you is, even though he's been a little bit, like, a bit shy about this, and I can feel him in my like looking down, thinking, "Oh no, how do I tell him that?" and everything, he's doing it with a smile on his face. Mm -hmm. It's almost like um, you could never be really angry with him, you know, for for, for all the terrible cock-ups he made. You could just like never be cross with him. You know, he's just almost like he'd look at you like a lost little boy, you know, and you'd think, "Oh God, I can't be angry with him." Um, I just try the plant yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and lock him out. Yes. Yes. Just yes. and lock me out. Yeah. Well, Twice. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, and I don't know why this is meant to be so evidential, but he's like he's laughing as he's telling me this. Now I've been a good boy. Can I have a cigar? <laughs> <laughs> chimney, didn't yeah, he? Right. Okay. Like towards like the end of his life, you didn't like him smoking, did you? No. And you were always telling him off about it. Where well, he's actually saying, "I've been a good boy, and I've confessed all this to you. Can I have a cigar now?" No. <laughs> <laughs> you understand the joke. Of, you understand the joke of it. No. Yes. All right. Okay. I'll leave his love with you. Thank you. Oh. I just knew as soon as he said Hong Kong it was going to be for you. Yeah, and I, mm. I knew when he said Hong Kong, but I didn't want to say anything. Because I, I didn't think I'd be able to handle it. You know, if he's, but the things he said were so accurate. They quite amazed me. We got married in 1960. We went to Singapore for two years, lived there, and then he got 
promoted and was moved to Hong Kong. And we lived there for another year. Mere money uh, never seemed to go too well together. My husband was in the Royal Army Pay Corps. Uh, he was a super fella, but he was terrible with his money. We should have had a lot of money. We ended up with nothing. I do know he was a gambler, but he didn't used to tell me he was, but I used to find out. And I think a lot of his money was somehow... Gambled away. Probably, yeah. Do you remember the gold watch? I had completely forgotten about it, but you kids says mm. to talk about this gold watch. Your beautiful gold watch I don't absolutely that went missing out in Hong Kong. Yeah, because we got married and went straight out there and I think he bought me, he bought me that. <laughs> really expensive. And then we'd miss it and I was always blaming myself and crying for it. Towards like, the end of his life you didn't like him smoking, did you? No. And you were always telling him off about it. Well, he died of cancer, lung cancer. He was a very heavy smoker. And he was a terrible heavy smoker. Mm. And I used to keep saying to him, one day you'll kill yourself smoking like that. And I used to absolutely go nuts when he'd smoke like he did. Mm. And you say, oh, if I'm going to kill myself, I'll kill myself. It's none of your business, sort of thing. That was, mm. was it. I'll leave his love with you. It made me feel absolutely amazed and wonderful. And I, it was so believable. Mm. And it actually did happen. <laughs>